In this session, we are going to talk about developing applications on G Suite and some of the do's and don'ts of developing applications and how to set up organizations in this particular session. So my name is Satish. I am your host for this session today. Uh, along with me, my co-presenters are Monica from Genentech, and we are going to have Sambit from Google Cloud talk in this session as well. So we will start with giving an overview of what kind of challenges our enterprise customers face when it comes to developing applications on G Suite and how we are driving certain industry trends with some of our product lines, followed by talking about our specific products. And then we'll have Monica present how they're organized and what are some of the best practices in their organization with respect to app development on G Suite. Then we'll talk about what is the future looking like? What are the key trends that we are seeing in the industry when it comes to developing apps in the productivity space generally and uh, within G Suite as well, uh, more, more specifically? And then we will wrap up this session with an overview of some of the exciting features uh, that we are announcing today with respect to G Suite development uh, platforms. So before we get started, a quick note on uh, how to submit questions. So all of you must have the mobile app. So you will be able to submit questions through your mobile app on this uh, uh, Dory. So you can go to this particular session details and then submit the apps there. Towards the end, we'll try to address your uh, questions. We'll also be able to, hopefully, we'll have time to take some live questions from this room as well. Sounds good? Perfect. So without further delay, let's get started. So imagine yourself to be a salesperson, an HR professional, a financial analyst, many different roles in an enterprise. Your key responsibility is in driving the business with respect to your role, with respect to your area of expertise. When you do this, you're obviously using many different applications. You're using G Suite, plus you're using other enterprise applications as part of this. That means you need some customizations in order to run your business process. You need all those apps. When it comes to getting those apps, there are some key challenges that the business users in an organization face. Number one challenge is what we call the skills gap. As the business process owner, you are the expert in your business process. You know how your process should run. You know how your business is run. You know your role better than anybody else in your organization. When you want to get those apps, you need to go to your IT developers and talk to them and educate them about the business process. And then they have the technical expertise to develop those applications. Do you see the problem there? So on one hand, the business, process, the business users are really proficient with their processes. They have the right skills for that, but they lack the technical expertise. On the other hand, the technical developers have the right technical knowledge, but they don't know all the business process. This is what we refer to as the skills gap. This requires communication back and forth in order to get the right application that you need. This is the number one challenge. The second challenge is the IT developers now, they have to work with many different business users in the organization across the enterprise understand those business processes, and then develop the applications for them. That leads to scaling challenges for the IT developers. The resources become limited as a result of that. Any organization, this is a very common problem. The third challenge that we see is that technology keeps evolving. Business processes also keep evolving. And as a result of that, it's hard to keep pace with those changes. Everybody is always playing catch up in order to stay in tune with these changes that are happening. That leads to delays in getting the apps that you need. That leads to getting the updates to the apps that you're using. That's the number three challenge. 
the net result of all of these challenges is that the involved stakeholders get frustrated. There are many different stakeholders. I have identified three stakeholders here. Number one is the business user who needs these applications. Number two is the IT developer, the technically proficient developers. And number three is somebody who is tracking the cost and the schedules and managing all these programs across, what I call the IT director here. The business users are frustrated because they are not able to get the right apps that they need on time or the updates that they need on time. The IT developers are frustrated because their project backlog just keeps growing as they try to work with many different organizations in the enterprise. The net result on the IT director is that now they are facing the cost and the schedule overruns. Those are the three, those are the challenges that everybody faces, all the stakeholders face. How are enterprises addressing this? What are the shifts that are happening in the industry to address this? So number one shift that is happening is that the application development itself is being moved to the business users, closer to the business users, where they have the right expertise on the business process, and they are in the best position to find out what is the application that they need, and better still actually develop these applications. This is happening with low-code or no-code tools for the business users to develop those applications. The second shift that is happening in this industry is that there are a lot of SaaS applications that are coming up, software as a service applications. When there is a need, it's probably most efficient to go and buy an application as long as there is one that meets the need. That has led to the growth of the enterprise marketplaces and the growth of the ecosystems where ISVs and third-party developers develop these apps and make them available to the different businesses. The third shift is within the enterprise, IT, IT's role itself is evolving. It's evolving from one of being a, an app developer and an app development organization to being an enabler for development of applications by the businesses and by the business users. The business users in this slide are also called the knowledge workers. So the knowledge workers are now developing the apps and the IT organizations are became, becoming the enablers. They are providing the right tools, they are providing the right data access, uh, and they are providing the right guardrails, security, etc., to make sure that those applications meet the organization's needs and, and comply with the organization's policies. In Google and in G Suite, we are at the forefront of driving these shifts. Number one, with respect to the first shift, we are providing the low-code and no-code tools to enable the business users to develop these applications. Number two, we are building this ecosystem and we are building this marketplace where business users in an organization can go and find the applications that they need and start deploying and using those applications. With respect to the third shift, we are also providing the right tools and technologies that the IT administrators need in order to ensure that all these apps that are being built by the knowledge workers across the organization remain secure. The enterprise's data remains secure. And that the IT administrators can go and monitor the application usage and make sure that they are able to whitelist the apps that they allow the enterprise users and the business users to install and use. That's how we are driving these shifts in uh, the G Suite developer platform. Getting into the specifics, I want to talk about the five products in uh, G Suite developer platform, give an overview so that you can go and explore further details on this. So the number one developer tool that we provide is AppScript. AppScript is a low-code platform. How many, how many of you here have already heard about AppScript? That kind of shows you know, how popular AppScript is. 
you can actually see that you know, there are over 3 billion weekly executions on AppScript. So it's a low-code developer platform, and it enables the business users to quickly build apps. How so? Because it provides an integrated development environment. It provides APIs for all the G Suite uh, apps. It also provides security in terms of OAuth, et cetera. And it provides an integrated runtime environment so that when you're building the app, you don't have to look elsewhere to uh, think about you know, where you're going to run that app. Right? So it has that integrated runtime serverless environment that you can use to go ahead and run the application. From a best practices perspective, if you have an application that, will be, that is going to be used by, let's say, a you know, few hundred users, AppScript provides the perfect platform to get started. AppScript still requires some coding and some proficiency in coding. This is for what we call the advanced knowledge workers or citizen developers. Let's say you, know, you build an app and it becomes very popular in your organization. Now it needs to be used by, let's say, a few thousand users as opposed to a few hundred users. That's the time when you would, as a business user, you would talk to the IT uh, organization and the IT developers, figure out how to scale the pl application, and also potentially you need new features, maybe some ML or AI capabilities, maybe some data analytics capabilities. That's when you can use Google Cloud Platform and scale that application and build the new features. The second tool that I want to talk about is AppMaker. AppMaker is intended to be a no-code platform, a no-code application development tool. This is for pure business users, knowledge workers who cannot code. At this point in time, AppMaker is great for building simple CRUD applications with the data that you're already using for your business users. If you want something that is a bit more advanced, if you want more advanced customization, you can use AppScript to customize your app that is built using AppMaker. So from a best practice perspective, if you're a business user, you would start building the app as long as it's a simple CRUD application, you should be able to build with all the visual drag and drop tools as it's illustrated on the slide here. And if you want more customizations, you would go to the IT department and try to uh, seek some of their help in order to customize the application. The third tool that I'm going to talk about is the G Suite add-ons. I literally know of nobody who is just using one or two applications in their business, right? They're always using a suite of applications. For example, if you're a salesperson, you're using G Suite, or Gmail, Events, Calendar, et cetera, but chances are very high that you are also using a Salesforce or a Dynamics CRM along with this uh, G Suite. So add-ons provides the right tools and the framework for you to get an integrated experience with third-party apps. That's what add-ons is intended to do. It provides that integrated experience. It also provides a development environment in order to build those add-ons so that you can use multiple applications along with G Suite in conjunction with G Suite uh, with that uh, you know, integrated experience. So from a best practices perspective, you would look for these add-ons uh, to start with on the G Suite marketplace, where the chances are that you will be able to find the right add-on that you need. Otherwise, this is not a development tool intended for the knowledge workers. Rather, this is a framework intended for use by the knowledge workers. So from a development point of view, you have to go to IT and ask them to develop an add-on and make it available to you and potentially many of your colleagues in the organization. The next one is the G Suite Marketplace. There are over 6,000 ISV uh, applications, both web applications, productivity tools, add-ons that are available on G Suite Marketplace. So if you're looking to solve a particular problem, this is probably the best place to start with. Look to see whether there is already an application that's available. 
and use that application. If not, then you'll have to look at how to build something uh, you know, in, in, in uh, collaboration with your IT. So if you're in the IT organization, from a best practice perspective, you should talk to them about the app that you need so that in IT you can actually make sure that the application that you want to make available to the rest of your organization is secure, it meets all your needs, and then that application can be whitelisted and make sure that all the other business users can use that. The last tool that I'm going to talk about is the admin console. So the admin console provides a number of different tools and techniques to make sure that the apps in your organization remain secure and the data in your organization remain secure. With the shifts that we talked about, now a lot of different knowledge workers will be building applications through the entire organization. The role of the IT now is to become an enabler, a facilitator for this kind of application development. As a result of that, it's very important that IT's uh, role is to keep the security of the applications and the security of the data and make sure that these apps and data meet the compliance requirements of the organization. In order to do this, we are providing a number of different tools, including whitelisting of the applications. Only the whitelisted applications can be installed by the users in your organization. Providing data access controls via whitelisting APIs and enabling APIs. Providing some data guardrails, as well as monitoring the app usage and ensuring that the resources that are allocated for the app are maintained. So those are some of the ways how we are doing the enabling the IT uh, to go and be an enabler in your organization in turn for knowledge worker apps to be built. This is an important area for, of investment for us. We know that there is a lot more work to be done here, and we are working on bringing more capabilities to ensure that as IT organizations, you can uh, empower your business users to build apps and maintain the security of those apps. So, so far I gave you an overview of the, um, the different G Suite developer tools and an overview of what are the industry shifts. I want to take a moment to summarize some of the best practices that we have learned from many of the customers uh, that we have spoken to. These best practices, I have divided them by two personas. One is the knowledge worker and the other is IT administrator. So if you're a knowledge worker and you're looking to build an app, your first step should be to identify what kind of experience your app needs to deliver. Is it a web app that users are going to access via a URL? Is it an add-on that will be available along with G Suite uh, in, the, in the side panel? Or is it an automation, automation meaning an event-driven app that automatically does some tasks for you in response to some kind of a system event? That would be the first step. The second step is to lay out the resources that your application needs. These resources could be, for example, certain compute resources or certain storage resources or maybe even some resources, uh, some access to resources such as ML models, et cetera. Depending on the resources that you need, you can think about you know, what kind of platform that you want to build your application on. The third is the data sources and the retrieval. The data sources could be, for instance, you know, it could be some on-prem system that you're already using. If you're an IT, you have to think about how will I make this data available to the knowledge workers so that they can build the apps. The data sources could also be some other third-party uh, you know, SaaS services that you're looking at. And maybe you know, you, what you want to access is just a few data items, uh, potentially using APIs. In some cases, you may want a large amount of data that needs to be analyzed by the application itself using some kind of query and analytics tools. So third, the fourth step is, using all of these data from the first three steps to make sure that you're choosing the appropriate G Suite developer tool. If you're looking to build a simple application you, with no code, you would probably start using AppMaker. 
Uh, if you want some customizations that are a bit more advanced, then you would start looking at app script and start using uh, that particular tool for building your app. If you're looking for much more advanced data analytics, crunching a large amount of data, or using some ML, or if you're looking for advanced storage, such as Cloud SQL, then you would be thinking about building your app on GCP, the Google Cloud Platform. Those are the kind of things that you should look at. So now, once you build this app, you should also think about how to share this app with the other users in the organization. Uh, this could be, for example, even IT providing some amount of pre-built code for the other knowledge workers to develop apps on. Or it could be IT enabling all the enterprise users to use this app via a private listing on the enterprise uh, marketplace, on the G Suite marketplace. Or if you are even looking as a, if you are a third party developer or an, or an ISV, you can use the G Suite marketplace as your distribution platform so that you can reach many different enterprise customers and have them use your application. Now, looking at it from an IT administrator's perspective, the best practices are, number one is, make sure that your business users, the knowledge workers in your organization, are empowered and they are aware of the tools. Make the right tools available. For example, you may want to make AppMaker available for all your business users in the organization. Enable it for them. Or you may want to build some um, community around the knowledge workers so that they can collaborate with each other, share information with each other, and build the applications on their own. This is important for you as an IT organization because then it reduces the load on your, um, on, uh, and the stress on your organization, right, by moving the applications closer to the business users. The second best practice is to establish data access and connectivity. If you want your knowledge workers to be able to build apps around um, on-prem data, make sure that that data is available. And the third best practice is to enforce security and governance. Now, when you're looking at enabling your business users to install applications from the marketplace, make sure that they're secure. If you are enabling your knowledge workers to build those applications, then make sure that those apps are also secure before they are uh, widely used in your organization. Or you may want to establish some data guardrails or some quotas in the compute to make sure that those apps comply with those limitations that you enforce. So those are some of the best practices that we have learned from many different customers. So at this point, I'd like to invite uh, Monica on stage to talk about application development in uh, Genentech and how they are organized. Thanks, Satish. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the session, and it's great to be here. Um, thanks to Sambit and Satish for inviting us here. I have a couple of my colleagues from Roshan Genentech, um, so glad we could uh, get a team together. <laughs> So I'm going to start off with um, talking about who we are. So um, maybe some of the US-based folks may know uh, Genentech, but Roche is basically a global pharma company based in Basel, Switzerland, with around, um, you know, you can see over 100 locations worldwide with around 95,000 uh, employees. And um, Genentech, which is a US-based biotech company, was acquired by Roche in 2009, and ever since we've been a member of the Roche Group. Um, another um, fun fact, I mean, it's, it's really a huge number, the 11, million Swiss, 11 billion Swiss francs in R&D investment. So we, uh, we basically are focused on three therapeutic, uh, four therapeutic areas, uh, oncology, immunology, neuroscience, and infectious diseases. And really, we have both the diagnostics and pharma divisions under one roof, and this gives us the unique opportunity to actually look at the patient healthcare across the whole spectrum. So right from prevention, um, diagnosis, treatment, and then monitoring. And our mission is really to find those unique and best solutions to improve our patients' lives. To really support our business and to fulfill the mission um, to, to you know, have the best solutions for our patients, 
we, we're looking at from an IT perspective, how can we actually simplify the landscape, um, you know, empower teams with the right tools, and also support these new ways of working. Our business is going through a major transformation today. And what you see on the left-hand side, and just to give you a background, uh, Roche migrated to G Suite in 2013. And prior to that, because the company had been in business for more than 20, 30 years, um, as some of you know, you tend to build up on legacy applications, legacy platforms, and lots of custom solutions on those platforms had been built. So we had sort of a messy application landscape. And we also have, you know, ever since we've moved to the cloud, we also got these third-party apps that were sort of confusing our end users. You know, when do I use this versus that? You know, uh, Microsoft was embedded in the organization before we moved to G Suite. So a lot of the uh, questions is when do I use SharePoint versus Team Drive or Sites, right? And so what our leadership looked at this last year, and we said, you know, there's a certain power in offering our end users a default. And that default is actually G Suite. So we believe G Suite offers the right capabilities to make our end users as productive as possible. But along with G Suite, so the G Suite++ is really about these third-party apps that we have also. So we use Smartsheet, Box, Trello. All of these apps actually add to that experience, they enhance, and they meet the gaps that we have just in the basic collaboration suite. So how are we organized you know, to support this very large, very complex organization? We have a global IT team that oversees, that looks at you know, where is the business going and what are the enterprise solutions we need to provide our customers so that they are not waiting for this and having to do all this work on themselves. So for example, we are focused on personalized healthcare in the Roche Science infrastructure, ERP, and many cloud capabilities even around automation. So that's something, so the global IT provides those platforms and tools. The functional IT is basically embedded in the business. They actually have the closest proximity to what's going on in each business division. So for example, our business functions can be from research, manufacturing, diagnostics, commercial, right? So each of these businesses have their own individual demands and they have their own you know, critical, business critical applications that they work with. And that team actually sits and delivers and drives that global IT strategy forward. And then of course, um, you know, we wouldn't uh, be here and be able to do what we do without hundreds of these knowledge workers who are both developing, but they're also consuming these, these, these services, but they're the ones that are actually building these solutions, you know, using some of the development platforms we have. And you know, we have a wide spectrum. Given uh, the, the, the application landscape that we have and the complexity of the business demand too, we have uh, every uh, you know, low-code to medium to the very complex apps, uh, a wide spectrum there. And so in the low-code, you know, we've seen a lot of, uh, ever since, you know, because we've been on G Suite for a while, we've seen lots and lots of launch workers build app scripts for many, many different solutions that they want. So for example, um, you know, app script comes embedded within G Suite. It gives you the ability you know, to connect with the G Suite API. So anyone who's have you know, curiosity to solve a problem within their own group can just pick it up and get started. It offers the integrated serverless runtime, and it's no additional cost. So I think this is something that we've seen grown very organically. We didn't have to do a whole lot to support the organization. Um, this is something people just ran with. In the medium complexity, we have you know, app scripts or you know, other um, uh, web apps that have evolved to higher complexity, where we are seeing the use of GCP and APIs. In fact, we ourselves in IT have built lots of global solutions, including our employee directory, which is called Peeps. Um, we've built that on GCP, leveraging you know, our identity management systems, HR systems, bringing together this data so that that Peeps app can be available both on Chrome as well as on a mobile device. Um, but I think in the last sort of year and a half, two years, um, we've seen a demand for more intelligent, contextual, um, you know, apps that will reduce the, the, the friction or, or the barrier of entry to use them. 
And these apps could be you know, using uh, some of the you know, cloud technologies like the natural language processing, machine learning, and AI. Um, we actually signed up with Dialogflow, which, which is part of the cloud AI stack on GCP, and we have about um, 70 digital assistants and chatbots, either in a POC or development stage. So there's huge interest and a demand from the business um, in this area. And again, we are integrating with some of our big third-party systems like ServiceNow, um, Workday, um, and, and SAP as well. So today, I actually want to talk about two use cases, both um, built with app scripts. Um, and both of these actually come from our pharma technical operations, business operations team, which is basically manufacturing. So this team actually has two uh, manufacturing like pilot plants here in South San Francisco. And they really wanted to have a tool that enabled to do some sort of workforce planning. So for both technicians uh, to be able to plan like the next two weeks on what's in the pipeline, and for management to have oversight over the activities happening in these plants. And so um, they looked at, obviously, there are third-party tools available. Um, there's a cost associated with that as well. But given that our genetic you know, processes are so customized to the molecules and the experiments that are being run in these plants, just to buy an off-the-shelf product wouldn't work, right? And um, they could also have gone to IT, but IT also adds to the overhead in the sense they need to explain, firstly, get the resource, explain all their business processes, the roles, um, and, and you know, it takes time to actually deliver it um, to, these, uh, to, the, to the pilot uh, plant workers. And so Scott Lunell, who's here with us today, the, the author and the, the person responsible for this app script, actually is very much like some of the knowledge workers in our organization. He saw this problem, and you know, he's not a computer science major. He comes from the life sciences background. Um, he was an intern at Genentech in 2017 and just you know, dabbled in app script. And along with another intern, and then later on as a full-time employee, um, took this on and built the app script to address this need. Um, and I think it's a great example of what's possible. You know, it doesn't need to, you know, you don't need to wait to solve a business problem just because you don't have IT resources, right? Um, and again, there's another um, you know, example, same from the same team, but for a different use case. So there are these different equipments. You know, there are five different labs within our manufacturing team, and they have um, you know, different equipment based on the roles that the people have. And earlier, it used to be a very tedious you know, manual process. People would go to the equipment, you know, sign up on a sheet, like, hey, I want to use the equipment from like, you know, 10 to 11 tomorrow, right? Really manual process. And, um, they actually, these equipments can't be booked by just anyone. So they're booked by the role uh, you know, that you have in the team. And so again, App Script came super handy because they could actually not only see the availability of the equipment, book the equipment, it'll show up on, on their calendar. There would be an email sent to remind them, hey, your equipment is due for return now. Um, and they could also like say the equipment is broken, they've used it and it's not working. They could just schedule a maintenance right there, right, through, the, through this tool. Um, they have colleagues now in Germany, the same team, and they said, you know, we would like to use this tool too. And so they've localized that same app script and used it for their German um, colleagues and counterparts. Again, a great example of how empowering your organization and your knowledge workers to use what's, you know, at their fingertips today. And we're really, um, you know, proud that um, uh, of the work that Scott's doing. He even, in fact, uh, ran App Script training for his uh, team there to, to help them build more. Um, I want to leave you with some best practices. Um, you know, obviously, we are uh, not a small company, so some of our best practices are really centered around how we can scale and support a very large organization. And the first one is the enterprise strategy. And this is not just about seeing you know, technology for technology's sake. It's about how can we deliver platforms and services that actually meet our business demand. So we look at like a two to three year and see how are we positioned ourselves with the cloud capabilities, with infrastructure services, application development services, to enable and drive that forward because the business is relying on us to do that. 
And the second thing we actually really value a lot is this customer experience. So when we think of IT services, you know, most people just don't like going to IT. You know, it takes long, you have to open 10 tickets, you have to go here, go there. We try to bundle these services, so we look at like, what does an application developer need you know, when they come to us? What does a DevOps person need? What do these researchers need when they you know, want to quickly spin up applications? And so we look at how people are consuming our service, what are they telling about it? You know, what is their feedback? Where can we do better? And continuously have this cycle um, with them to, con to improve it. And then the, the, the third thing that you know, we have to drive is the compliance within all the products, so, so platforms and services we provide. And this is a proactive, close collaboration with security, with legal, uh, with core map to make sure that anything we recommend and anything we say, this is supported by IT, it's actually complying with Roche data and privacy standards. So essentially, we are making sure that the heavy lifting is already done so that when end users go you know, into the application landscape, they can actually pick a product knowing that IT has vetted it. It's safe to use. The second piece is around empowering the organization. And this, the first part, um, business partnership is essential for us because of how you know, diverse and geographically you know, uh, dispersed we are. It's very important to have, we call them business part, IT business partners. They're basically embedded in, IT, in, in the business, but they understand the IT landscape. They can connect the dots for the business. They can point them to the right people. They can point them, hey, you don't need to build this. There's already a solution available for this. So there is this cross you know, sharing of um, you know, ideas, but also solutions on how business can solve their problem. Um, we also make a very concerted effort to make sure that anything that we introduce into the organization, there's full transparency on the roadmap. So there is nothing unexpected or a surprise, right? So we make sure that we have uh, our sounding boards with our stakeholders and customers internally. We also have user adoption services regionally uh, spread across who are actually our channels and, and they're you know, communicating new changes um, that are coming in our pipeline uh, to all of the, of the users. We also run a lot of pilots, um, so we're very, um, because we want the organization to be prepared for change, we make sure that, for example, you know, whether it's Team Drive or it was Hangouts Meet, right, or there are new you know, Docs API, things like that that are coming, that we open this up, run pilots in our test domain, give early access to developers so that they are prepared for changes that they need to make in their applications or in their, you know, the way they work. And, and this actually gives us the early access to their feedback. And we've been actually lucky to have a really great partnership with Google to funnel that feedback back into the product teams so that you know, this feedback goes there early and often. And it, you know, they actually know what doesn't work for us and what works for us. And the last thing is around learning. So I think this is, this is also very critical, especially as technology is changing. There are new emerging technologies coming where you know, our business and our IT is actually ramping up. So we run hackathons. In fact, Procurement just had a Procurathon two weeks back. Um, you know, this is really to say, let's bring our top two, three business problems here. Let's get a team of developers, UX, business analysts, all of us come together and let's try and solve this in like maybe one or two days, right? And this is a great way to understand you know, you're pushing the limits of the APIs available. You're pushing the limits of like, how can we address this problem? Can we address this problem? Are we too early? Um, you know, should we you know, then request more you know, feature updates uh, from the product teams and come back to this later? This really gives us this cycle of understanding and learning uh, to be prepared to do it in production. The, the part about learning is, uh, is definitely knowledge sharing. Again, we are huge or heavy users of Google Plus communities. Um, I can't tell you that uh, you know, a lot of our Google Plus users rely, in fact, I met Scott through one of these communities, is that I just posted something on AppScript and you know, Scott responded. Uh, so there are lots and lots of people that are connecting with each other, sharing learnings, sharing like even their failures, like, hey, this didn't work for me. Has anyone else tried this, right? And so these network communities are ones where 
a lot of folks rely on them for you know, learning and understanding what's going on in the organization for specific subjects. Um, and then centers of excellence. Uh, we have Roche experts in specific domains. So for example, G Suite app development, API integration. You know, we now have one on conversational platforms. So what we do is we look at the emerging technologies and the business demand and say, hey, we need a, a set of experts on these technologies that are ready to jump into projects and to help the business when they need. And so they're at hand to advise and guide um, our business uh, as need be. So, we're still learning. Obviously, this is, this is not set in stone. We are learning and adapting, and we are continuing to do this um, to fulfill the need that, you know, basically address what our patients need next. Um, and with that, I want to hand it off to Samvit. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Monica. Um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to talk about the future of app development, some of the key trends that um, at least we see, and we hope that you see the same way. So a um, few things, right? So if you look at any productivity platform, right, everybody provides the standard mechanism, the, the same way of sending mails, calendar chats, um, writing docs or sheets and things like that. But fundamentally, we see three different, you know, um, market trends or tech trends, which is going to impact this productivity space in the next five to 10 years. So what are those three? The first thing that we see is um, we have now capability to understand the user context. What I mean by that? So everybody has a mobile device. So at any point in time, systems know where you are. And depending on where you are, the experience can be customized. So that is you know, the context, an example of the context. The second thing that you know, the systems are um, good at today is um, capturing the usage pattern. So what I mean by that is how you do your work. The systems know how you are doing that work, so things can be customized as per that. For example, if you're always you know, um, offlining something, you know, the systems can know, and you know, based on you know, how and when you are doing it, we can take actions on that. And the third thing that happens is um, when, um, like when you go to a new organization, the way to learn about that particular organization is you go and ask people. The knowledge in the organization is there in people's head. You know, it's sort of the tribal knowledge. Wouldn't it be better for you to know in a systemic way? There are some people who have tried this using sort of, you know, structured data analysis, but given the fact that, you know, today we have this knowledge scattered across different, um, chat exchanges, different email exchanges, different docs, a way to synthesize that knowledge will become important. And that's what you are calling enterprise knowledge. Using these three, you can potentially categorize the experience that are going to come into three broad categories. Um, I've called this as assistive experience, knowledge visibility, and process autom automations. Let's look at each of these. So this will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So like if you drive any new car today, what you can see is there is a blind spot detection in most of the cars. What is that doing? It's helping you drive better. It's providing an assistive capabilities on driving. You can see the same pattern emerge on software. So if you look at a chat, right, and the moment some chat comes in, you, it suggests you some option based on the context. And what does that help you, especially on a mobile device? It helps you give a response which is relevant. So that is assisting you in responding, right? You can see that if you have used uh, Gmail AutoCompass, the same kind of mechanism. The, 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 um, the opportunity here is bring that to the developer platform so that you can use that or the knowledge workers can use that to build assistive experiences. The next thing I'm going to talk about is this whole idea of enterprise knowledge. Now, with the structured data, you can go to your analytic system and know, for example, who the best customer is and is he being uh, uh, spoken to by the best customer service representative in your organization? Who is the expert in a particular area? But with, with enterprise knowledge, it will be possible for you to, like, without having any structured analysis, know who, who is the expert and who do we reach out to if you need some help be it you know, um, usual things like you know, 401k or anything of that sort. So think about it. When an average worker spent 20% of the time, if you save that, instead of working for five days, you're working for four days. That's 
and or you can use that day to do your 20% project. However, whichever way you look at it, that will help you do that. The third thing I'm going to talk about is automation. <clears throat> this use case, every, all of us go through, we want, to, um, we want to have a discussion and we want to have a chat. And what happens is we have, you know, before we know, we have five or 10 email or chats gets exchanged before we set up a uh, meeting. The system recognizes that, suggest you some time slots by looking at your calendar and your availability, and you click, just one click, and the meeting is set up. Not only that, based on conversation, maybe it can set up the agenda, figure out which are the documents that are important and attaches that to um, uh, the calendar invite. All these things will be possible by automating processes and tasks. So that is the third big trend you will see. Most of the productivity improvement and the ensuring developer tools will capture these three trends. Now to the final section. So what's new in G Suite? I'm going to talk about three things. So we are launching a new add-ons platform. Add-ons has been there for for a long time, but we are going to do a new add-ons platform. What that will help you do is, instead of driving an add-on for each of the G Suite apps, you write it once and it works across in all the different G Suite apps. It will have the user context and you can have that customized user context. It will make the development easier it will make the management easier. It's a uniform experience across G Suite instead of you know, per host app. The second thing that we are announcing today is alpha for data connectors. So what this means is most of you, as we try to move your workload to cloud, you have this hybrid scenario where you want the cloud to work with your on-prem system. So with this alpha, what we are doing is we are integrating seeds with the on-prem relational data store you have um, on your on-prem data center. This could be SQL Server, this could be Oracle, this could be MySQL. So you can have all that data come into Seeds and be used in Seeds and you can um, have that you know, hybrid experience. The third thing that I'm gonna talk about or announce today is what we are calling G Suite uh, Marketplace Security Assessment Program. The GSM Marketplace, it has more than 6,000 apps as was talked about. It becomes very, very challenging for people to know which apps to rely on, which apps not to rely on, and it's a big challenge for admin. We have partnered with some of the industry leading security analysts and the publisher of these apps, they can go and uh, have their apps security assessed and if they pass the test, we'll assign them a badge, then that becomes easy for the administrator to facilitate you know, app buying process. So those are the three announcements. With that, you know, I'll end this session but um, your feedback is super important. It's the gift for us. So uh, please provide the feedback and that will help us you know, improve the session.